Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be giving some examples on what healthy boundaries look like in very specific situations. Watch this video. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, please click the subscribe button, the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you've been with me for a while, thank you so much and welcome back. Today, we are, it's May 1st, 2022. We are celebrating the launch of my fifth online course. It is called Bonders Bootcamp. And because of that, I want to give you some examples. My clients tend to love it when I do this. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of what we do when we do boundary work. I want to give you some examples of what it actually looks like and sounds like to have healthy boundaries in specific situations, okay? So let's get started. In the course, you have a plethora of this, plus worksheets, plus video lessons, plus a whole bunch of stuff, okay? But this is an extremely tiny cliff note version of certain situations that could go awry if you don't have good boundaries and do go bad if you don't implement those boundaries due to guilt or shame or all the other things I'm going to describe in here. So the first example is if you don't want to go out and your friends want you to go out. Okay. It's happened to everybody. We all know most of the time when someone asks you, Hey, we want to go out to this club or this blah, 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 or whatever dinner. And you're like not feeling it. How many of you guys are like, but I don't want my friends to not love me and I don't want them to not approve of me and um, I don't want to feel uh, this, the nerves of like someone being mad at me, so I'll just go. And you go against your own boundary. Instead, this is what I'm going to suggest. Yeah, I hear that. You know, I just don't feel like it tonight. I'm really feeling like having some self-care time. How many of you just got anxiety? Or you guys, I love you so much, but I feel like I just need to be at home. None of you want to do that, but I do that all the time. And I just feel like being at home. Healthy friends are like, okay, I totally get it. Wish you were with me. Would love it if you joined, but like I totally get that you need space. Or, you know, I'm just, I just feel like there's so many things I have to do instead, but um, catch me tomorrow, all right? Example number one. Example number two, you don't want to go eat Italian food when your boyfriend or girlfriend wants to go. Normally, people with weak boundaries will say, God, I really don't feel like that, but sure, honey, I'd love to. Total lie. You're lying. You're lying to yourself. You're lying to your partner. It actually negates that authentic communication, but you're trying to keep things status quo so you don't have to deal with conflict because conflict is scary. You don't feel safe. We're going to go into that in a minute. What I would do instead is say, you know, babe, I'm really not feeling Italian. Can we do like um, Thai food? Or if your partner's like, um, yeah, that's fine. Let's find something else. If your partner's like, no, I'm really wanting Italian. You can say, yeah, okay, that's fine. But tomorrow can we do something that we both like? Because I really don't like Italian. So like tonight's Italian night for you, but tomorrow I really want to do Thai food. Is that cool? Yeah, sure, babe. Compromise. Healthy. Boundaries. Right? Third example. Someone owes you money. How many people stress out about that? When someone owes you money and you're like, I feel guilty for asking, I feel super uncomfortable. Oh my God, I shouldn't even need it. Self-judgment. Oh my gosh, I feel like, you know, if I ask them and they get mad at me or they're going to think I'm ridiculous for even reminding them or I feel bad because they're going to feel insecure. Or they're going to feel ashamed that they forgot. All these stupid things that go through our heads, right? And if we're totally emotionally sovereign and we don't take everything personally, We'll stop worrying about, <clears throat> well, if they didn't pay me back, then it must mean that they don't value that, which means they don't value me. You're making it personal. If we take everything out that could be personal and we just say the facts are the facts, they owe me this money, it's been this long, I deserve to ask, it's respectful of them to pay me, we're so afraid that they won't and then what that means. Instead, we have to take all that personal garbage out and say, this person owes me this and I value myself enough to get what is owed to me. So, hey friend, you actually owe me like 200 bucks and I've waited like a month, but I realize I kind of need to pay bills and stuff. Would it be okay if you pay me that in the next couple of days? 
Not a big deal. The scary part is, huh, what am I going to say? And what are they going to say? The reality is it doesn't really matter what they say. You need to get what you're owed. And if they're mad about it, that's not your problem. We got to stop this over responsibility thing. Another way you can do it is say, oh my gosh, do you remember that 200 bucks you owe me? You actually never paid me back. I feel so bad even asking you, but if possible, I'd love to be paid back today or tomorrow. Awesome. Right? No one likes that subject. It makes us feel like eh, shameful, <laughs> but what's wrong with it? Nothing. Nothing is the answer. <clears throat> My other example, if you need to take space from a drama person in your life, someone who's in like a breakup that doesn't stop talking about it and you just need a little space, what you can say is love you so much, totally here from you, for you. I'm so busy in the next 24 hours. It's not personal, but just text me if you need me. And if I don't get back to you right away, it's because I'm in the middle of this work. Truth. Or you know what? I know what you're going through and it's gnarly. I've been there. It's scary. It's crazy. I know that it's so much for you, but I need a little space right now for me because I'm going through my own stuff. Or number three, you know what? I can talk to you for like a half hour, but then I have to go. I got a whole bunch of stuff I need to do. Totally love you. Not negative. If it's a bigger thing and you're thinking about going no contact for a while, I've had a lot of clients come to me with this. You can say, I love you. I know you're going through a lot. There's a lot on my plate right now too. I'm not backing off because I don't want to be your friend. I'm backing off because I need to really focus on me for a while. But let's talk in May or let's talk, is this May? Let's talk in June, right? And if you ever need me, it's an emergency. I've totally got your back. There's that. My other example, um, if you want to leave a party early, you know how many people come to me and they're like, I feel so bad. I have to leave. My friends don't want to leave. You know what I say to them? There's a thing called Uber. You can just call Uber. You don't need your friends to leave. You can just Uber. But I feel guilty. They're going to be mad at me if I leave. Okay. Is it better if you're mad at yourself because you don't fulfill your own boundary and leave? Or is it, why is it that they would be mad at you if you left early? What do they really need you there for if you're not feeling good? Question those things. Last example. Someone gives you advice about your looks, your diet, your clothing, something that feels a little triggering for you. Let's say someone's telling you, oh my God, you're eating so many French fries lately. <laughs> I don't know. This comes up because something similar came up with a client last week. You're, you eat a lot of French fries. Da, da, da. Yeah, I do. I really love them. Do you? Do you want some? A lot of times people project their diet issues onto you. Or, oh my gosh, you eat a lot of carbs. I know, I'm so lucky. When I say this to clients, they laugh at me. They're like, you would never say it. I'm like, oh, I say stuff like this all the time. You know, a lot of people will say to me, I like, I like gummy stuff, like gummy bears, gummy worms, gummy everything. And I've had people say to me, wow, you're like obsessed with that stuff. I said, I absolutely am. It's been one of my favorites from, since I was a kid and I just love it. I'm so lucky that I can eat this stuff and actually still feel good in moderation. You know what I mean? Or if someone's saying, wow, your shorts are really short, you are like, I know, I look so hot. <laughs> or what about that bothers you? Or if someone's saying, um, hey, you know, I was thinking we're going to this party. It's actually pretty casual. You look really dressy. I know, I feel like standing out. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Does that make you un uncomfortable? This is how I feel comfortable. Work this process. Look at what comes up in you when you think about having these boundaries. Is it uncomfortable to stand in your truth? And if so, great, do it more. I'm all about the counterintuitive way. What we need to do is we need to realize that a lot of times we don't have these boundaries is because our inner child isn't totally trigger free yet. What that means is when you're younger and you're afraid to say what your needs are or what your preferences are, it's because someone else wasn't approving of it and you're afraid of that conflict and you're afraid of disapproval because when you're a kid, it means survival. But when you practice this and you become more and more comfortable in being self-approved because you realize your safety is now within you, you'll start to realize that the issue is that you're maybe feeling safe, but not emotionally safe because you're not totally emotionally sovereign. So how we become emotionally sovereign is by doing these things to realize I'm standing up for myself, what I need, what I desire, what I prefer, and I still feel safe within myself. I want you guys to practice that. If you want to dive into inner boundaries, outer boundaries, emotional boundaries, spiritual boundaries, 
energetic boundaries, check out my emotional boundaries, or sorry, my boundaries, it is about emotional boundaries, boundaries bootcamp course. It is open. It is going to be open for enrollment for, I don't know how long we will see, but we're open now today. The link is below. It is also right here. I hope you check it out. I hope you tell anyone about it. If you're highly sensitive, you need this course. Everyone needs this. Everyone needs to understand and learn healthy boundaries, what they are for you, how to implement them, why you let them go, how to bring them back, how to feel totally safe in it. And what happens when you totally own and live in alignment with your boundaries is not only do you start to feel safe in yourself and you become very discerned with what I want, what I don't want, how to decide, how to make big decisions and not feel weird or guilty. Oftentimes people come to me and they don't know how to make decisions because they don't want to feel that feeling of guilt or uncertainty or maybe being wrong. What you learn when you implement these inner boundaries specifically is that what's right for you is what's right for you. It was never wrong. It was just wrong according to someone else that you were depending on. When you're depending on self to become totally sovereign, you know that what's right for you, if it's not right for someone else, then the someone else is wrong for you. You learn to live in alignment with your own self, which creates integrity, which creates this opening of purpose, which creates this abundance, which creates actual freedom, happiness, and fulfillment. I want that for you as I've gotten that for me. It's life altering. So check out the link below. Please share this video with at least one person you think it could serve. I'll see you guys next week.